You want to start a hardcore world, but you don't know how. Well, you've come to the right video. Today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to survive in the first 100 to 1,000 days of hardcore Minecraft in the safest way possible. Taken from somebody who has survived over 35,000 days in hardcore, almost an entire year of playtime. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the tips and tricks that will help you guys basically start a hardcore world. And then in the advanced guide, the other video that will come out after this one, I'm going to teach you guys how to keep that world going for years and years to come. So you guys don't have to keep starting up new hardcore worlds. You guys will be able to choose and build really cool stuff like this. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, in today's video, I'm not going to spend my time basically teaching you guys about the fundamentals of Minecraft that we should all know about. One of them, getting a bed, making sure you have food, all that kind of stuff, because I think that's obviously very obvious that you need to be able to do these things in order to survive in a hardcore world. But in today's video, I'm actually going to teach you guys a little bit of a different direction. So, right here, this is one of the fundamentals of hardcore Minecraft right here. This iron farm is what keeps my whole thing going. You're gonna wanna make an iron farm as soon as possible. Trust me, you will be thanking me later. So this iron farm, it's just a Rayworks tutorial. If you wanna build one module, it literally takes about 20 minutes to throw together, if that, in early game. I've got four modules. This is about 1200 iron an hour. But I play for about seven, eight hours a day, so I'm averaging about 9,000 iron a day. Anyways, that's not the more important part. Once you've built yourself an iron farm, you're gonna wanna build one of these. This is a villager breeder. This is an incredibly simplistic villager breeder. I'm pretty sure Waddles designed this. Anyways, extremely easy to put together, but this is what you're here for. You wanna get, you wanna get as many traders as possible. So the more traders, the better. These guys, though, definitely stay away from those guys. They are no good. S keep your distance. Kill them if you can. Throw them inside of a hole. Do whatever you need to do. Actually, I actually think you should just throw these guys inside of a hole. That way they don't keep respawning. Anyways, put them into a chamber. Get your trades. And primarily, you're going to be focusing on these guys over here. So you'll see that just trading alone... You could take all your iron. You could trade it with your uh, toolsmiths here, your armorers over here. But more importantly, look at what they have to sell. So you can basically buy all diamond armor with enchantments straight out the gate. So that's incredibly useful. So you don't have to go inside of all the caves and stuff like that. Most people will actually die early game inside of a cave, whether it's to a skeleton or to a creeper. But primarily focusing on these guys is your way to go. So once you get yourself some diamond armor and you have a little bit of an economy going by selling all of your, uh, your iron for emeralds and stuff like that, you're going to want to start focusing on these guys right here. So... This is a route not a whole lot of people like to go, but making sure that you get your books all basically sorted out to try and max out your gear as fast as possible without putting yourself into peril danger. Um, you've got your Fletchers, you have uh, the armors, but this is a perfect segue into my favorite food. So, some people will argue that golden carrots are the way to go. If I were to cure this trader right here, I would be buying, I would be basically buying three carrots for one emerald. That's not what I like to run with. I actually ate golden carrots for over two years in this hardcore world until I switched over to pork chops and then I never looked back. So, once you max out one of these pork chop guys, you can buy, first off, it's an easier unlock of a trade, one emerald, not even cured, for five pork chops. So, there's a big difference between pork chops and carrots. So if you'll walk with me back over to my storage room, I'll explain to you what it is. You'll notice that as I have two bars down at the very bottom, my health bar, obviously with the hearts, and then I have my hunger bar. So pork chops, eating, four, uh, eating one pork chop will replenish four drumsticks, but eating one golden carrot 
will only replenish three drumsticks, but give you more saturation in return. I'm pretty sure that golden carrots only give you 14 saturation and pork chops give you 13. But in my opinion, I think pork chops are the way to go. They're easier to obtain. They're cheaper to buy. You can make hogland farms down the road for whatever you need to do. And they replenish more drumsticks. The faster your drumsticks replenish, the easier and faster your health will basically replenish. So, um, so yeah, I would say go with pork chops. Uh, another big thing as well, moving forward, is I would just stick to Duration 1 rockets. They're really the, the safest rocket to do, easiest to craft. Why waste the gunpowder? So that's another huge one. Go with Duration 1 rockets because look at this. So if I fly into a wall, I'm only propelling myself into that wall a little bit. I'm only taking a little bit of damage. But if that was a Duration 3 rocket, that would have done a lot more damage. So you're going to want to stick around with the Duration 1 rockets for sure. Second, to go along with the Duration rockets, check this out. So if I were to fly into that wall, I take about three hearts of damage. But comes the most important thing of any hardcore world. Your chest plate. I have seen so many people lose their hardcore worlds to not wearing their chest plate when they should be. So, watch this. It's called the hot swap. To become a really good Minecrafter, you have to master the hot swap. This is an update that came on 1.20. All you gotta do is basically pull out your elytra and right click. Same thing goes with your chest plate. Get used to using your chest plate as often as possible when you're not using your elytra. If you're ever inside of a cave, put your chest plate on. If you're ever outside and you're building and you're not flying around anymore, put your chest plate on. Be very, very aware of your chest plate. I always keep it in the exact same spot all the time, uh, no matter what. I also have rules in my world where I will never go through a nether portal without my chest plate on because you never know what's waiting for you on the other side. If the game were to lag, you could potentially die. If there's a creeper waiting for you on the other side, you could potentially die as well. So make sure you never go through a nether portal with your elytra on. It's just not a good time. If you're not going to hold a totem, whatever you want to do, you know, Make sure you're wearing your chest plate. I'll have you know, I haven't popped a totem in over... I haven't used a totem in over a year and a half in this world. It's been almost two years since I've popped a totem in this world. Um, most of them, a lot of the time, were just from dive bombing into the ground. But I'll show you guys an exception to the rule, though. So I'll meet you guys in the end. Now, you won't have an elytra right away, but you're probably asking yourself, why do I have two elytras in my hotbar? That's because I'm working on a project in my end right now. So I, I have a certain rule that I always abide by when it comes to the end. One of them being the two elytra rule. One, I'm wearing an elytra. Two, I have another, another elytra in my hotbar. In case this one breaks, all I gotta do is do that thing I just taught you. Switch your wings. Rule number two, I always make sure I have more than two stacks of rockets. And number three, I always have a slow falling potion because you never know when you're going to need it. It's one of those things that you don't want to use, but you're going to be thankful you have it when you actually need it. So when I go through stuff like this, I can pop in on the other side and be perfectly safe. And when I'm flying over top of the void, I know that if my wings broke, I would also be fine as well because I can swap my wings over top of the void with ease, and I also have a slow falling potion, and I'm conscientious of all the rockets that I have in my inventory. This will bring us to our next thing. So this is a perfect example over here on a project that I'm working on right now, but obviously this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna make sense to you guys right away, but 
This is a thing that I see a lot of people not doing. For when you're building an early game and you don't have access to beacons or anything like that yet. So we're going to pretend like you don't have access to any beacons, nothing crazy. Your early game beacons are actually these guys right here. I don't see enough people lighting up their builds enough where no mobs can spawn. Whether you have to spam them everywhere in your world, just put them all over the place and make sure that no mobs can spawn. Remember, you can't get rid of the possibility of death, but what you can do is you can minimize your risk of death by eliminating factors that could potentially take you out. So the only mob that is able to spawn in the end here would be the Enderman. I've completely eliminated that from happening. The, the things that could potentially happen to me is I fall into the void, but I have two elytras, I have my stacks of rockets, I have my slow falling potion. If I came into this unprepared, I would have a higher likelihood of potentially dying in the end or any situation in any part of the world. Which brings us to our next part of this video. Two very important words. Preparation and patience. Patience and preparation are two incredibly valuable things that you need to learn for a hardcore world. Patience, because the only thing you're going to rush is season two. You need to be a little bit more proactive and a little bit more prepared when going into certain situations. You need to think about what can go wrong, what could, like, what will go wrong. Whatever you need to think about, make sure that you're going into a situation prepared, no matter what. Because you never know when you're going to get sidewinded and you're going to be caught lacking. So you're going to want to make sure that you're thinking about things that can potentially go wrong. And you're going to try to eliminate those things as you go. But by implementing the things that I've taught you guys so far, whether it be chest plate awareness, making sure that you're 100% uh, on top of it. I'm not flying right now. I'm walking. I don't need my elytra on, so you need to be very conscientious of that. But when you get better at being able to know whether or not you have your chest plate on and stuff like that, you'll be get better at catching yourself when you fall. So a lot of the time when people are playing, and it's early game, and they don't have any beacons, they'll fall off the, the edge of the map, and they'll be like, oh my god. But if you practice, you're just going to be kind of automatic to constantly catch yourself with your wings. Or your water bucket, or whatever it may be. You'll just be, it'll become second nature to swap your wings and fly away. So you can basically eliminate the risk of fall damage just by practicing chest plate awareness. That's an incredibly important thing that you need to make sure you're constantly aware of. Another thing, obviously, I've done this more than more than enough times that I would like to admit, but don't dive bomb the ground. You're not Superman. Come on now. Don't dive bomb the ground. But anyways, I feel like I've been teaching you guys a lot about chest plate awareness and getting your game started with an iron farm and villager trades and staying the heck away from caves but let's take a little bit of a step away from all that and let's dive into a couple other little things to help you guys early game so one massively crucial thing that you need to start doing right from the gecko is honestly key binds key binds i literally couldn't drill that into your head enough Key binds is the difference between pulling out your sword and pulling out your pork chops. When you're in danger and you really need to pull out your food in order to eat or you need to pull out your bow or do whatever you need to do, you need to do that through your key binds. So, by doing that, you go into your controls, you go into your key binds. Also, you can look at this. I like to hold sneak just because it feels a little bit safer. I like to toggle my sprint because I'm always running. I'm never, ever like not running unless I'm underwater. But in here is probably the most important tools of the game when it comes to hardcore. You need to be able to make split second decisions when it comes to bringing out your tools. So 
the first thing I like to do is I immediately get rid of the drop selected item and I make it something that's kind of inconvenient. I've seen so many people accidentally throw their swords into the void, whatever it may be. I change that to something that's a little bit out the way. Mine is V. I'm still playing with this keybind. Anyways, hotbar. This is my sword. Sword is Q. Um, these are actually not what they're equipped to. I actually use my mouse to pull out a lot of my keybinds quite a bit. And then tab is to pull out my rockets. I find that really helps out a lot for me. Another the huge thing that you guys will see me doing all the time is toggling my perspective. So let me show you guys a little bit about how important toggling your perspective can be. So you're looking at your field of view like this. You can only see what's in front of you. But if I toggle my perspective, now I can see behind me. If I look in front of me, I can only see in front of me. Toggle my perspective, I can see what's behind me and what's in front of me. So more importantly, let me show you guys something else that I like to do a lot of the time, especially when you might think there might be something bad around the corner. If I know that there's something around this corner here, I can actually peep around a corner and see that there's a warden over there. So obviously I can hear that there's a warden over there, but if I was like this, I wouldn't be able to see around that corner. I'm not, I'm completely eliminating a whole point of view. Doing this, I'm opening up an entirely different point of view. So toggling your perspective is something that you're gonna wanna get used to straight out the gate. So see how easy it is for me to like immediately pull out keybinds and all this kind of stuff. I'm constantly swapping my elytra to my chest plate. I'm constantly pulling out my rockets. I'm flying. I'm doing all this and everything's happening within a split second. So with hardcore, you don't really get a second chance when it comes to being able to make those split second decisions you kind of need to be able to clutch it. So make sure that you dial in your keybinds. It's going to feel extremely weird to you at first, but it's going to be massively beneficial for you in the future. So I hope that this video really helped you guys out as a little bit of an explanation, but not just an explanation, but a little bit more of an in-depth reason why I do the things that I do. Hopefully these things work for you. If there's anything that you guys want to hear more of, let me know in the comment section below and I'll come out with a more advanced guide for what happens after you get your elytra, you get your beacons and all this type of stuff. And I can show you guys a little bit of a sneak peek behind what it looks like to have a 35,000 day hardcore world that is constantly in the works. It is a lot of work. It is a lot of preparation, but let me tell you guys this. It is massively rewarding when you get to build up your world and see things develop throughout the years, knowing that you did it all without dying. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.